to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, everyone. Before we start, we have to amend the agenda for two items. We're going to be, we, signed, we signed the note for the 360000 last Friday for the LAC. So we're going to have to approve a transfer of 360000 from the LAC Equipment Fund to the Debt Service Fund. Correct, Peggy? That's correct. We're going to just sell that in the oh, oh, down the bottoms fund. Okay. A little bit of and then um, we also have to, along with that, approve the transfer of $4,030 from the general basic fund to the debt service fund. So we'll do those two items. With that, is there a motion to approve the agenda? I'll make a motion to approve the agenda with the amendments. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. And then we have minutes on February 22nd. I would move to approve. More? Second. Bruce? All in favor? Aye. 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 Do you have general public concerns at this time? With that, Mr. Hyde, do you want to come up? Uh oh. Are there any information? I've seen him on the phone. You better jump back, Kyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you. 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 Well, is, yeah, yeah, I got a couple things going on that I need to share with you guys. Um, at the February Conservation Board meeting, the, the board voted to proceed with plans to sell the Oxbow property, which is out there across from the golf course in the west edge of town. Um, they had a, a couple different reasons for wanting to do that, um, probably the biggest of which uh, being a desire to use the money generated from the sale of that property to jumpstart uh, the Sheldon Park expansion plan that we've been working on. Um, I, think, I think you're all aware we acquired 27 <coughs> acres here about a year ago to this, uh, add on to the south side of Sheldon Park. Um, so that's, I guess, kind of where we're at. I know uh, there's kind of a process you need to go through to get to the point where you're able and ready to sell. Um, I know there's what, a public public hearing. Yeah. We're, we do that I once think, or twice? I think by that time you're done, you're going to need to public hearing. Okay. So as, the, as word gets out, I mean, if the public does have some objections, they will have the opportunity to come here and yes, there's there's concerns. Concerns. and all that good stuff prior to sale. Pardon? How do you come and value you after yeah, you know, appraised? Or um, I've talked to an appraiser and we have a, a general idea of what okay. we can expect to get out of that property. Um, I know in talking to John, um, he said basically you have two options. It's either go with like a sealed bid type of a thing or just have a straight up auction okay. with an auctioneer and high bidder gets it. Obviously we'd have a, have a a reserve um, so nobody can mm -hmm. swoop mm -hmm. in and get it for little or nothing. <coughs> but what is the zone there? Uh, I mean, is it's really residential. Yeah, it's residential. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So nobody could go in there and put a restaurant or something like that? <sighs> Not without getting it. Well, that's what I'm saying. Rezoned. And that would be sold with the, the vote? <coughs> access, that's a public access and you can't change that. Because there are those accesses down on West River Drive, there's so many accesses along there that people have the right to go down to the river. Yeah. Yep. And that, that access is there, but the river has changed to the point. Oh, it's there. Uh, it's not really realistic even to get a kayak out of the river mm -hmm. there without pulling at the last 40 feet. Mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. uh, we quit putting the dock yeah. in yeah. last summer just because. So that we can't put in a boat, it needs to shell. I mean, I put it in for four years. Because it's so shallow, you can't pull it down there with a boat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's terrible. So, we had a cutoff date for the rentals out there? September 1st is right. the last day of the time. A sale sometime would be after that. So, yeah, we're looking at a early fall or a sale sale. And what year did you want to do that was built? Mm -hmm. uh, it was That's the year I moved to town in 1991. Yep, I was going to say early 90s, 91, 92, right in that area. I remember Dennis Thompson was 
desire to, to sell the facility, not really wanting to compete with, I mean, there's a couple businesses that cater to the same groups of people that, that we have rent that out there. The parking is The parking is atrocious. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you have people that get complaints because they're parking on their yard, in their yard, on their, yep. mm -hmm. and that street yep. is now. Yep, you've heard it. I mean, it's, it's more of a public service, honestly. The county... In a good year, you might come close to breaking even money-wise as far as expenses and revenues. In an average to a poor year, county's losing money. Okay. And I guess the board just felt like what we've got going at Shelvin better fits our mission or what we're about, you know, to try to provide the best. Well, I'm going to go in minutes. In the last meeting, it sounded like you were going to maybe be looking at developmental phases, which is key to this because the money ain't going to be there to do everything you right. want. Yep. And I like that approach. I think the board, your board's looking at it. You know, they, they want to develop, they want to have a plan, but they realize they got to do it in steps. So. Yeah. And ideally... And the first step is to make this move. Yeah. Well. If, we, if we do go ahead and sell the Oxbow, you would take that money and use that money as a match for an additional grant. So you would kind of compound is what we're shooting uh, for. Well, so, you know, as a board, we've been aware of this for the last couple of years. Yeah. And yeah. This yeah. is nothing new. And, Sometime in the last five years, there's been some interest in it, so it yes. might be that you're still with us. Yep. And I hope tomorrow we'll find out until you go through the process. Right. right. So that's, I guess, where we're at on that. Hey, yeah. Mike, would would uh, someone be able to buy it and continue to do the same thing with it? Or would that have to be rezoned? Well, or that one have to be rezoned. That's what I'm wondering. Because I know that's what the first question is going to be. And maybe the question is, there's some maybe need to go into the council and ask for any of the processes. And you can check that out before you made an offer on it. But that's why it's good that it's out to September 1st. Because if somebody's in the last minute, we're going to have some time. We have some time that it's going to be. If there's a question that I can't answer, I can research it. Could it be the council or is that county? That would be county. Kind of county out there, huh? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That would be to the guys behind you would have to give us that. Board of Adjustment. That's true. The Board of Adjustment would have to review this. Well, I guess you just have to see what you have for interest. Still looks like progress, no matter what they have to go through, because I think you got a good point. Well, I think we're getting there. Well, yes, no, probably should let the public know if that's your intention. So they got time. So that is a huge groundswell in the position. I guess maybe we need to rethink it or look at it. Yeah, you get it out there and it's in the paper, you know, you'll hear the people in the open again. Yeah, definitely. That's why we have these meetings. Well, Ken's not going to post this for a couple of weeks, sorry. <laughs> but I, I think it's good to get out and, it so can, and sometimes people have other ideas they want to put forth and uh, it's good to get everybody's opinion. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's a good idea. Yep. So welcome. Uh, I got a letter from the DNR Friday that the site has been approved. Which is a step, a small step, but it's a step in the right direction. Um, I'm still hoping to hear back with final approval from them within the next three weeks. I'm sweating right now, Jerry. Yeah, time is short. Yeah, so days are ticking by pretty fast. Yep. Yep. Normally we open April 1st. And now I'm hoping April 15th to May 1st is now my, my goal, and I'm, I don't know. So we'll keep on keeping on. But Could we do that? Just not have access to water? You could do that. Yeah, if you have a couple options, Bruce, you could either just not have water available to the campers. We could purchase water treatment, chlorination equipment, which should be about $2,000, and just start to treat, taking from the well that we have. 
Um, and then when you get that new well online, hopefully you would be able to wean yourself off right. of that chlorination equipment. Um, I guess it just kind of depends on, you know, if this continues to drag out, I don't think you have a choice but to, you know, purchase that, that equipment because you're going to have to open, you know, May 1st at the latest. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you're so, limiting your income on the other side. Of the yes, time. exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you don't. You hate to lose people that come because yep. then they go somewhere yep. else and they, oh, mm -hmm. we kind of like so here. I'm just kind of in limbo right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, I'll definitely keep Yeah, to buy that stuff, can you resell it later on? You part your money back? Yeah, that would be an option. Mm -hmm. When you have other people that. going through the same stuff that yeah. we're going through. So mm -hmm. possibly, yes. Mm -hmm. And I mean, <coughs> I don't want to face this option, but there is a possibility that even with the new well, well it could, yeah. could yeah. still yeah. have yeah. the corn. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. so it is what it is, you know. And I, I think you've all dealt with the DNR. Um, you just well, the have to just jump through the hoops that they tell you to jump through. So, but we'll make it work. That's what I got. It's not bad. So I far, we have found got the signs up on the bridges. Yes. Quite a while ago, that's yep. nice. It took me a while to find and locate ones. Yep. At the least they're there. It gives us yep. the truck drivers and yep. people <coughs> equipment through there. And I did get a quote. Oh, did you? you want to tell me about it? Are you willing to spend $60,000? Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> what are you going to do with that? Wow. So, nope. the budget came and went. I, I didn't even plug that in because I thought that's that ridiculous. Work at new trail oh, yeah. 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 $60,000 to paint it. Mm, a lot of it they said was because of the traffic, traffic control. control. Yeah. 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 Um, they said it was going to be a nightmare. Thanks so, for checking, but we won't be I did. That yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and just since we've got a little extra time, what's, what's the status on the, uh, up the road on the the gates up there. Are they, did we get them fixed? Are we, or where are we on those? The cables are fixed. Cables are fixed? Yes. Okay. Um, and what happened there? Did they just stretch out and break? The cables snapped. They snapped. Yep. Oh, yep. And that's actually the second time that's happened. The first time was right? the first year that I worked here. You know, the other set snapped. This one is a lot of water. Just the floor, floor. imagine. Um, the, those cables, they're in that water and they just get corroded. Yeah. I mean, it's a galvanized yeah. cable. That's where they're breaking at the water line. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep, but they still get a coat of rust on them, and it evidently weakens the because we pulled out the house. They open them now for quite a while. Oh boy, Jerry! They were open. 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 And we had a heck of a time getting them open because the ice had formed mm -hmm. on the walls, and that, mm -hmm. those gates fit tight up against so the we walls. So we spent a oh, wow. well, week there, like a week or melting the ice off of the wall so that you could get them open because the river was at a level where we needed to open them and it was a struggle but mm -hmm. they, open, they weren't open very long oh they were open about a month oh, yeah <laughs> that river was high <laughs> for a long time was that north gate the, 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 the north one the bottom seal was yeah. damaged yeah. which I think we just it's still functional. The fix on that is fairly spendy. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, yeah. the water through the water thing. Yeah. 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 But we actually just opened them last week. A week ago today again. <laughs> the river, you yeah. know, he's yeah. 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 back it's up. Running pretty so good now. So they're working okay. They worked on Monday. Yep. Yeah. Worked fine. Okay. Uh, so. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. Sounds good. Thank you. They also pulled that big tree out <coughs> by Oxbow. There was a big uh, tree that had floaded down the river, and I, yeah, I talked to him and said, you know, that thing's going to end up over your dam, and then we have a time to get it pulled over. So they got it Friday. They hooked it with their little tractor, and you have to drive by there and see the root that they pulled out. It is huge. But it wasn't at least uh, hanging over the dam, so mm -hmm. they did get it pulled out and cut up. Well, that's something you stop the time and ask him to do something. He'll get it done. We say you'd rather do it up there at Mesa, then trying to pull it off the top of the dam. When it's up there with a chainsaw, trying to cut it loose. Or in your driveway. Yeah, or in mine. All right. <laughs> Let's go down and do a couple items <coughs> till at least 9 o'clock. First one will be the crew of the filing and publication of the calendar year 2015 salary report. They gave a new wrinkle in the law this year, wasn't it, Peggy? Pardon? That was some new wrinkle in the law.
And if you look at it, it's not going to match what your W-2 says because this is a calendar year, not a fiscal year. Mm -hmm. So well, it shouldn't match your W-2, but it may be off because sometimes you guys get yeah. feedback for uh, meals or mileage. Yeah. 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 I'll make that motion to approve. Thank you, Mark. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on this item? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. What was the new law, Peggy? Something to do with the compensation board. It had to do with the budget. You had to have some kind of a. I have a resolution, resolution. for when we have a budget hearing on the 14th. Yeah, that one left. That the Yeah, that's what you were. I had set up there, was handed to me when I walked into the building. The fresh one, the new one? Okay. Make sure everybody gets to see that. Uh, then we have a, <coughs> I suppose that's a one year beer license for yeah. last year. Excuse me. Uh, paperwork's been filed um, and signed off on. It looks in good shape. I know it's good for insurance. Uh, they don't have to have insurance for okay. one beer. Draft shop is only for a liquor license. Okay. No, okay. Carl and Bruce. Carl and Bruce? Yeah, Carl and Bruce. Yeah, and they apply for every year. We have certain ones that apply every year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. All right, Rick, you want to go through number eight on weather construction? Yeah, the uh, pay application for Woodruff uh, for pay estimate number eight. Okay. There's a couple, of, well, not a couple, just one issue I want to talk with the engineer again before we decide to pay this. So if you want to wait till next week, or just give me the permission to sign it after I talk with the engineer. Uh, there's just a low spot in the street where I was up to the other day and I asked him, is this water always sit here? And he says, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, water turns to ice in the wintertime and that's not good, so we might, we might have to address that. So I don't want to pay him any more money until I get that checked out. Okay, no, pay this, but we're not, we won't have claims until next week. I can hold on to it as long as you want me to. I want to talk to him before I okay it. Oh. Is that all right? Then, yeah. Let's put it, the board would let's put it until next week then. Then, yeah, we won't have it in with the claim set. We won't have a claim list. Okay. It'll be off there. It has to be approved in order to make it onto the claim list. Okay. Well, we'd better not pay it then. I don't want to pay it until I talk. I think I'd rather wait too, just because we well, have yeah. better letters. We waited for them. They can wait for us. Right. And if you got legitimate questions, they should be answered. Yeah. For it. yeah. Get, how, much, how much was that amount for the big Yes, I did. Okay. It's 42,000 or something. Okay. 44. 44. Yeah, about like 40. 44 or 94. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just like to have a lot of money on our side before, before yeah. it's done. More do I. <laughs> okay. All right. That's good news. Let's just do that. And then let's go ahead and um, on Friday, Peggy and I will here to sign papers for the $306,000 loan with 0% interest for 10 years, Peggy, is that correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they explained to us, Peggy, that um, we actually get an extra year before we start making payments, so the annual payments will be 40000 but we won't have to make payments for another full year, which is, okay. that is good, fair enough. So we assigned that, so we need at this time to approve a transfer of $360,000 from the LSG Equipment Fund to the debt service fund. And this was suggested by our accounting firm, T.P. Anderson and Company, that the check be deposited into the LEC equipment fund, and then in order to pay it back to Bank Iowa, we have to put it in the debt service, service. fund. So it goes through that. Yeah, right. that's, that's the proper paper, paper, paper trial. So. All right, I'll make that motion that Peggy stated. No, second for that motion. I take a transfer. Thanks, Carl. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Uh, so it was just straight 360? Mm -hmm. Yep. And Peggy and I had, while well, we went down to the law enforcement center, then got our picture taken out of the nice sign. Mm -hmm. It was help just to, yeah. And then we got a chance to go, Dean did take us through, and it, I'm glad we had a little time to go through it with him. Once you finally see all the equipment, it was a whole lot different when they were finished. Well, that's 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 see a lot of smiles and a lot of happy faces, so I think they've done a it's really going to be a big improvement for room and space and privacy and 
we went through the locker areas where they're going to build those lockers and stuff, and that's really going to be, I think, some important things to get done in there that will make that one pretty efficient. So. I was just telling you guys before the meeting today, we're going to take the Rotary Club through there tomorrow for yeah, the public relations type thing. So be more people saying it. I don't want to dwell on it too long, but the one thing that was impressive to me is, and I know I know I was cringing when we went through those, what do you call those deals, the mobile unit, board units, you know. Yeah, the, the consoles. The consoles in the um, dispatch areas. I mean, that, in my mind, was a lot of money. And, and I'm it was. Sure there, 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 there was $50,000 just for the table. We, we got two. We 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 saw, but we eventually see all the cameras they got located around town and the connect and how that whole system works, and then all the computer screens that break down your road mapping, the situation where you know where the it, it problems are, and what we're going to be able to do as far as responding. It it should really make things on response times quicker. I would think. I mean, they're real happy with that. Oh, that yeah. center's got some room now, and, and they got a little bit of a window. And I don't know. It's just a little better working atmosphere than what they were used to. So. It's a lot better working atmosphere. Yeah. Uh, it, they, they were in a closet before it was yeah. it was and even Sharice where she was from where she's going I mean everybody's got a little better a lot more room yeah. well, well I think we're working there when they that now that when they first built it years ago too well <coughs> in 79 did we even have 911 in 79 when we moved there no 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 I don't believe so well we didn't have Seven deputies, and we didn't probably have as many police. I mean, there's just the a yeah. sheer number of people in the office. Mm -hmm. So, along with that, we have the other item, which is to approve the transfer of $4,040 from general basic fund to debt service fund. Have you any comments on that? Um, we have to pay interest on the note to pay it off, and that's just what it amounts to. Um, but our option was to pay it on a general basic and then bill back for it to taxes or just absorb it and I thought for $4,000 probably could just and I visited with a couple of you about it and that didn't seem to be an issue. Okay. So could we have a motion to move that $4,040? I'll move. I'll second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? All right. All right. Well, is there any other items to do that, Peggy? Not quite nine o'clock. Is there anybody sitting We did get a certificate of acceptance um, on the Motorola part. Um, that's that on to Rick, too, if you want to see that. It just didn't set it up here, and if I you guys want to see it, too. Um, Highway 20 Association sent. Um, if we want to be part of, I mean, it's put it in our budget, but it's, I always ask you guys, do you want to pay the dues or not? Because this is the official bill for it. How much is the dues? Um, counties are $150. We have been paying that. Yeah. Recently. I'd probably and say we keep paying it until the project's completed. It's yeah, two, more, I think it's two more years. They're hoping to have it done. Like just because it's gone past your county, you just shift that inquiry. Okay, put that together. Um, what else do I have? Here, we did receive just a pamphlet on an introduction to planning and zoning for local officials. Mm -hmm. I thought, well, it's a meeting in several different places throughout the state. Maybe when any person retired, they might want to go to this and, and find out some of the rules. Yeah, we'll let them hold on to that we have interviews. Yeah. Um, I did get a hold of Fort uh, Collins County. You had a question: How much time does uh, Mr. Stahl work? Yeah. He's the 24-hour a week uh, part-time person, and then they did attach their budget for the Good. sanitarians there. So I'll do that to Jerry so he can look at that. <coughs> okay. When you say 24 hours, that's covering both counties. I did not ask that. Okay. I, I didn't know if that was kind of what he was going to say for us. Yeah, that might be. Because that's one thing that must be because I don't think he's going to ask him that we're going to say he wasn't full time. Yeah. That, would, that would be three days. That sounds probably yeah, right. Yeah, that's probably yeah, right. I didn't specify in there for each county just how many right. hours. Because we're on a by call basis. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
When did we put the deadline for the? I know you haven't had the paper for advertising association. When is that closed? March 11th. March 11th. We just got it in last week. Have you gotten any applications? No, not yet. Pretty early. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. People. I had a couple people ask me just a little bit about this. So. Yeah. And I've got job descriptions for all the pieces of it except for sanitarian. Yeah. Have a job description sure. For sanitarian, because I suppose we've been you know, sharing with the county for so long that we never thought we would. So I could get, yeah, another county's sanitarian job description. Yeah, and we probably, right we, if we get some applications, we probably would be setting up some interviews by the end of the We should probably have that job description to tell the people what they're getting into. Right, we'll be able to get the interview classes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll check with some other counties. And I would say we'd probably start at the end of the month, probably. Okay. All right. <laughs> It's just about nine o'clock. Is this great to be with you? Yep. Okay. I think we'll just go ahead and Jenna, you can go through the process. Okay. Um, the first one that I have here today is Gregory Woods from Livermore, or the property in Livermore. It's currently owned by, um, or currently has two parcels on the county health tax sales certificate. And we've been in contact with each other to see about getting that those two parcels assigned to him or his parents. I wasn't quite sure what name it would be going under. Um, been there since 2010 and no one has shown an interest in acquiring it until now. Uh, what we've discussed is he paid a $10 assignment fee for the county health certificate to him. He paid the delinquent taxes and the drainage assessment and not the hoping to get the penalties and interest waived by the board so that sure. could proceed. And like I said, it's been sitting there for five years with nothing happening on it. Well, actually, seven, because it takes two years to get yeah. a county certificate. Well, that's kind of what we typically do is we drop the interest and the penalties and, and uh, just get it back on the tax rolls. It's adjacent to their um, parents' home, unless they have an interest in keeping the property up. Do you want to explain any what your intention is for the property? Just eventually build on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's always good. <laughs> right, right. And plus, it cleans it up. And then you know it's going to take care of it. I'd go ahead and move your sign. Which one is this? The yeah. Livermore property. Um, yeah, the Livermore one. No, the two parcels we can do together oh, okay, for him, right. I guess, and then the other part no, of the property would have to be separate. Yeah, no, is it the Livermore Twin River? Yes, yes, That's correct. The property. The river, so <laughs> but it amounts to each parcel has seventy-seven dollars of delinquent taxes. One parcel has. $286 and some extra, I guess they're both half together of drainage. This is deep what he would pay. And then there's another um, 416 of delinquent taxes that's not on the certificate. So the drainage and the back taxes would be Yeah. Back, and we would forgive the penalties and interest. Right. Mm -hmm. And that would be Well, it's a $2, $20 in the assignment fee. Yeah, 856 plus the $20, 10 for each person. Correct. So, Carl, would you like to make a motion to that amount? Yes, I would move that we assign a tax statement and forgive the interest and penalty. Transfer the property. And the amount will be 87658, correct? Mm -hmm. okay. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second on this. Well, is there any other discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Another individual who would wait just a minute. Are we? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Ken, are you okay with coming now? Okay. Morning, Jeff. Morning. Morning. Okay. This is the same situation as the 2006 tax sale certificate that the Humboldt County has acquired due to the local taxes. Um, I visited with Kent Crosley as he owns his family owns land adjacent to this parcel in Grove, Twin Rivers Township, over by Hardy area. I'm not exactly sure where 
where it is from Hardy. But I recognize it really with the yeah. Rick, you know, but yeah. So you need thing about the property it's land lost and it's along the river and <coughs> no one has shown any interest in it until now. Um, and due to the do you know the acres are there? I thought on the sheet it said five. Okay. I knew it wasn't a large number, but we're talking one parcel of a ten dollar assignment fee, the delinquent taxes are only twenty dollars and then the well, owing on the certificate is three dollars. For a total of thirty three with the assignment fee. Okay. And that same request to have the penalties waived to get the correct. property on the tax rolls and with someone that, taking this care has of it. been off for many years, correct? Yeah, well, the tax has been paid since 2004. Right. I'll make that motion. No drainage on this. No drainage on this one. I'll second that. All right, we have a motion by Bruce and a second by Moore. Any other discussion? Being, being slab locked, I mean, there's. Yeah. I'm not doing that to it. Thirty-three dollars. Thirty-three dollars. Both in the timber area, timberland mostly, right? Mostly like floodplains by underwater right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 Yeah, and that's the first thing I'm going to take a look at. You can see your name on there. Okay. All right. Jesus, we don't even have an address, so everything we mail comes back. Okay. All right. Seeing there's no more comments, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So this is what his family is like. <coughs> the neighbors and ours that we're talking about. Oh, oh, oh. Really? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
on mental health in schools. We canceled those two with Coleman because she's undergoing investigation in a lawsuit. So, mm -hmm. and the state won't let us uh, use funds for that. So. <coughs> Number 26, uh, Central Isle Juvenile Detention Center. We've got a 13-year-old boy that we've had there uh, for almost a year now. And he's got mental problems, and the state won't do a thing about it. We've tried and tried and tried to get the state to do something, but they, they just leave him locked up over there. He's caused, in this last year, he's caused $4,000 at least damage to the facility over there. And next week he's going to be turned loose. We figure he'll be right back in there again. But mm -hmm. It's just a shame that they're being, they won't get him in a mental health facility, you know, they just leave him in the jail. All right. But, uh, I guess that's about all I have. Oh, let's see, on that DCAP, we did a, uh, we did a uh, renew a contract with a uh, Unity Point House mental facility. Okay. They're gonna, and they've met with all the schools already, and okay. everything sounds good. good. So yeah, that's good. Bruce, what you got? Okay. On um, Monday, the twenty-second, I started, or after I'm um, <coughs> here, I had a meeting in Clarion with Building Families. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> well, I'll just leave it at that. One's really smiling, the other we're not sure if you should smile. Um, actually, it's, it's pretty interesting. Um, I guess I kind of wonder how much those two they cross with Bud Mill. A lot. Yeah, that's what I kind of thought, but I didn't want to be a stick in the mud the first day. I'll wait till the second meeting, so. Uh, then after that, while I was in Clarion, then I had to head for Fort Dodge, so I just cut across country to get to the city council meeting for a CFR meeting, which they uh, brought the, the uh, paperwork to the city council in Fort Dodge to change the zoning in that parcel of ground, if they can get that purchased or if they can get it uh, the zoning change, then they're going to possibly build over there. So, is that property owned by two different owners, Bruce, or just one? I think it's just the one. Just the one, okay. Somebody's talking about it. I thought it was two. Maybe it was right back to Oklahoma. Yep. Yep. There's. I looked at it the other day again. It's so, a nice, nice area. Yeah, and we were all, Michelle and the architect, and three or four of us were down there, and we went in and sat down thinking it's going to be. We're going to have to talk and talk and talk, and one of the councilmen made a motion that they think it would be a great addition to that part of town. He made the motion and they approved it. So we're hoping next week when we uh, do the second reading, then uh, we we'll skip the second and so we can get it bought or get it purchased so they can start the next process of the fundraising and whatnot, but I have some pictures of it and yeah, you should look at those pictures. quite a, the quite a really good. Then I took off from there and came back to Humboldt for the Farm Bureau meeting. Uh, caught the last half of that um, up there. On Tuesday I had my UDMO meeting over in Eagle Grove. Uh, Polly Call on the listen to the Edmo meeting, and then uh, Thursday night we visited, or I had my uh, CFR meeting down in Webster City, which we talked some more about this, so. Uh, busy week. Busy week, yeah. It's amazing how these many mornings are the least, least time consuming of all the activities during the week. Yeah. yeah, well just trying to keep your my yeah, sheet so that I know which place I'm supposed to be going to and which I need to get something better figured out for my mileage because I, I scratch it on a piece of paper and then the door opens and then I'm looking for that piece of paper. <laughs> oh, yeah. You got so, a new app you can put on your phone. Oh, no, yeah. Well, me and my phone don't always get along, so <laughs> I'm lucky if I can answer it. 
That was all my week. Oh, what did you get for it? I skipped down on last week, so I'll have to catch up a little bit. Tuesday the 16th, we had a daycare meeting, and we talked about fundraising a little bit, and there was going to be a meeting with the architect later on, which I missed. Then on that same day, I had a conference call from ISAC on this information transmission county system. We talked about some bylaws, some approving some contracts and so forth, pretty routine. Then on Wednesday night at 4.30 the 17th, uh, we had representatives from the school board, USDA, Humboldt Mayor, Humboldt Economic Development Director. The, anyway, we met with Dakota City City Council. They had some concerns about daycare. And I think we came out of there with an understanding of what and why it was there. The big question is, why don't we use that old building down in junior high instead of up here? And there's so many pros and cons to coming up here, and so many pros to it. I think they understood it afterwards, so it was a good meeting. Uh, then on the 4th, no, the 18th, we had the bid lighting up here. What you guys are all at. And then last Thursday night, Melanie got a hold of me downtown and said, why don't you go to this Stone Spotter School? So I went to the Stone Spotters out to Oxbow Thursday night. I don't think I'm going to be a Storm Spotter, but it's kind of interesting to see what they go through. And then I went out to NACO to a legislative conference. We left here at 6 o'clock in the morning on the 20th, got back at 2.30 in the morning on the 23rd. And while we were there, we had lots of good speakers. Maybe you want to hear them, maybe you don't. The first day on Saturday, Melvin Hauser from Pottawatomie County and myself on the Ag Affairs Committee. And we had a lot of discussion on rural development, rural housing, rural poverty, and heard some statistics about Mid-America's having a big problem with rural population decline. They said 72 percent of the counties in, in the United States have lost one-third of the population. So that creates a lot of problems for finance and health care and those kind of things. Rural water infrastructure, we've had discussions about that. That's another big problem. Uh, lack of technology in rural areas. They said 65 percent of the counties and cities with a population of 250,000 or more have adequate technology for cell phones and internet service and 911 and those kind of things. But only 5% of the cities, less than 10,000, have the proper infrastructure. So because of the decline in population, there's a lot of problems in rural areas that we have to be concerned about. Uh, we've talked about farm authorization of the Farm Bill, rural health care. Also a figure that I was surprised in, life expectancy all over the world has increased except for males in rural areas. The male population in rural areas expectancy has gone down. The rest of the world has gone up from where they were. I don't know why all that is. Hard to do today. Hard working? Hard to do today. Might be. Talk about poverty. A lot of the meetings we had dealt with rural poverty, particularly children. They said the 15 in the rural areas, 15 percent of the population is children, but you represent 25 percent of the poverty worldwide. So that you don't think about it here in Iowa. We have so many young families that still have the means to feed their kids. Uh, we had a session Saturday on technology. We've had those before about cyber security and matter of being hacked. It's not when, but just it's not if, but when. We're going to get it someday. You have to be very careful. And you'll hear those sessions before. On Sunday, we had an update on. Uh, the baby boomers talked about some of the things that we have forthcoming. That's part of the, the growth of the population. They said 65 percent, no, 14 percent of the people now in the United States are over 65 years old and expected to double by the year 2050. So you see what's coming on as far as what needs to be done. It affects economics, it affects workforce, it affects population as far as what's expected in, in health care. Uh, another big problem was, uh, I don't hear it so much here, but evidently abuse of prescription drugs. That's running rampant worldwide, particularly in the United States, and more so in rural areas. And they said one of the problems in the rural areas for the poverty and the druggies is the fact that mechanization of farm equipment. Where you used to be a hired man working for this, working for that, now the farmer does it himself. You have these untrained, unemployed people living in small towns. They want to leave their small town, so they become it's a problem. Not necessarily in Iowa, 
probably West Virginia is the worst one. You know, a lot of Southeast United States, but Iowa, you look at their map, we're pretty good shape yet. You know, everybody doesn't have a job. That's part of the problem. They, in that same meeting, they said too many, too few families have any income other than Social Security to live on. And again, Iowa's not that kind of a problem. But some states, that's all they got to survive on. And when you have one of the spouses die, they get almost starvation. Then we had some good general stations. Uh, Sunday morning we heard host of Fox News. We had Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. We had Tom Vilsack, Secretary of Agriculture, Secretary of Transportation, Secretary of Education. Probably the best speaker was John McCain, who ran for president from Arizona. It was kind of interesting to introduce him and give a big wrong wild eyes. Running for president got beat. He thanked everybody for getting beat. He said, when I got beat that night, I went to bed and slept like a baby. And I wake up two hours and six, and then I ball again. <laughs> but he was a good speaker, and he had a lot of good things to say. We also had a person from Obama administration telling about everything they've accomplished. You know, some people believe it, some people didn't. That was interesting. Uh, majority of the speeches somewhere, somewhere, had a thread going through them about poverty and mental health. We have the same problem you know, here in Iowa. Mm -hmm. Lack of providers, and jail diversion. That's just a thread going through every every state. And you go down to ISAC, you hear the same thing. One day, a couple of afternoons, we took off in with the House. We talked to all four of our senators, representatives, and we had a half, half hour with them. I guess that's about all about to. But I think we went through four or five things on each one, and we wanted them to be keep in mind for as far as Iowa goes. Wanted to protect the low interest rate on municipal bonds because that's economic development. You know, if you don't have, if you raise those bond interest as high, there's not going to be that going on. Not building, they're pretty safe investments. The other thing we've harped on year after year: a fair marketplace. We want tax on the internet. There's too many people buying things on the internet. You go down and look at it in the store. You go buy it on the internet. You get evade the taxes. It's voluntary right now, but nobody does it. And you're cheating the government and cheating everybody out of the money, besides you're running the local people out of business. They can't compete when you get a 7% discount already. So, where they got that, get that through, who knows. Another thing they wanted, you know, they ex extended that transportation bill for five years, and we need to have a longer range plan. You hear talk, Paul talk about that. You can't just live from daylight to dark and make any long range plans. What is the U.S.? That was a big discussion which we have discussions here about all the time. And I, I'll give you a little handout you'll read this later about summary of what we did there a little bit. We went to a Midwest uh, regional meeting. Cindy Bobbitt, who is from Oklahoma, is the Midwest chairman. She's going to be down at ISAC. We had a little session there on the merits of belonging to ISAC. And a lot of the advantages. Nothing else, just a drug program. Give discount drugs for jails for people, all residents in the county can get those. So she's going to give a little spiel on that down at ISAC, and we're going to have a panel afterwards to talk about those who belong to it and who who don't. There are 23 counties in Iowa that do not belong to ISAC, do not belong to NACO. So we're going to try to convince them to probably like preach to the choir, but it's really had some good meetings out there. As far as going to the light, the liaison or to the meeting in D.C. versus the summer conference. The summer conference is a lot more fun, but it's a lot more sitting out in D.C. You had access to a lot of good speakers, and so it's really worthwhile, I think. Peggy, you'll have to go next year, and you'll be ISAC chairman, so you won't have a choice. That was the extent of my... Well, it's good to report as far as... Well, I always say, one thing about Cindy Powell, though, is just good report. It was fun. There were 26 of us from Iowa. Yeah. There were about 3,000, 3,068 counties in the United States. But you talk to almost everybody, anybody from almost every every state. You know, it's amazing. They have the same problems we have. If you're out west, you're talking about tax uh, payment and rule of taxes because there's some federal land. Then we talk about something else. But everybody's got budget problems. Everybody's got mental health problems. Everybody's got poverty problems. It's, it opens up your eyes a little bit. That was it. Thank you. Thanks, Carl. Don, you're here. Why don't we go ahead and let you come up and rip him out a little later.
that time of year, you know. Well, if you look like uh, a pretty routine kind of time. If you if you look at uh, look at my schedule, it was actually a month earlier. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, the weather's yeah. a month the weather's earlier. nicer. It's got me scrambling right now. You'll be done by the Fourth of July. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope not. <laughs> a lot of lot of year left after that. So, but I did go. I came down. In fact, I came down Friday, and then I left and came back. I couldn't believe how much the snow went down between Friday and Sunday, and because I couldn't really see much on Friday, so I finished up on Sunday looking at ditches. And yeah, everything actually looks real good out there. There's there's a couple I might uh, one area I might touch on that. Uh, uh, only one area that I saw that had a lot of willows down the bottom of the ditch that we're, we're going to have to, even if we get started with the rest of the ditches early, we'll have to wait and do that with foliar because when the willows are in a position where they're right down at the bottom of the ditch and we can't get them sprayed without spraying right in the water, then we need to switch to a, a aquatic herbicide. And none of the, the dormant sprays that we have are labeled for aquatic. So, so they're right down the waterline. They're probably not huge ones. Then again. They're not big. Yeah, they're not big. Uh, we'll keep them under control. Yeah, it's just uh, uh, an area where uh, uh, yeah, I'll pass yeah, these around and I can kind of kind of point out what for you where that was at. And everything else could uh, uh, basically be done as soon as it uh, dries up enough. Now the snow's uh, uh, all but gone. So tomorrow. I missed that. Well, we're talking only a couple of inches tonight. Which third of the county are doing this? We're doing that lower third this year, but from Highway 3 south to the uh, Lester County line. Okay. And then also what we've done is uh, uh, the ditches that cross over and go into Webster uh, County. If you'll notice, I've got maps for their side of the line as well. And what I've done is talked with the auditor's office in, <coughs> in the, the various counties and those are the ones that Humboldt County are, are controlling uh, county on. Uh, there are two over on the uh, over on the on the east side that are actually they only come in. I think it's five dash one hundred two, and then one other one too on there. But I've got that on the Webster County map because uh, Webster County is actually the controlling county on that. And when we do their side, uh, we'll do both sides. But the ones that I've quoted here for both both counties. Uh, they will be uh, be done this year. So, as I said, it, they, they cross over. Now, the area where I saw the willows, and you know, they're not big, but it seems like we encounter them every time we go through there. So maybe when we do uh, uh, work next year in the other part of the county, maybe double check double them. Double check that. Come back and hit them. Come back and hit them again to try to get them to. Uh, they're not big, but they're. It's up on uh, uh, drainage district number twenty on the very north end of it there, that last mile. There's just, if you go and look at that, you just got a, a line of, of uh, red stems right through the channel. But as always, I brought the, the, the last three years history as far as the cost and the, uh, the quotes. Uh, the quote for uh, 2013 was 34,750, and during the uh, work time materials, that uh, the actual amount bill was 26,156.26. In uh, 2014, the quote was up a little bit. It was 49,500, and the actual amount was 28,266. And last year, it was a really, you know, we really skinned it last year because the quote was 33,250. And the actual amount was only ten thousand six hundred ninety. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is, we do a time materials, and we, that, it, it works out for both you and for me. If I come in and just tell you a price, and we end up going over, you then I I lose in this situation. If I tell you a high price and like that, the guys, uh -huh. you know, what they spray, they spray, and uh, that's what we uh, build from is the daily spray records. And then you're so, not out there thinking, well, geez, I really should go some more, but if you see it, you do it. We do it. My guys, my guys don't have anything to do with this pricing. They're set out to, to do the, the ditches on, and that gets with the, um, like I said, the, the one area there I saw, and I would tell the guys not to do it until it's, we do it with the polier. But there are also times when the guys might see something. They might get in the center of a, a, a section, and there might be a bunch of willows down at the bottom that I didn't see, yeah. and they will, they will automatically not spray those, and then I'll. You know, like when we build it out, hold that ditch until we can get it done with foliar. 
uh, they make that they can make that decision themselves too. If they're spraying and all of a sudden they're spraying right in the water, then they're going off. Well, we we better switch this over. But uh, yeah, that you know the, the, the supervisors make that decision, not the applicators. So the supervisors, but the applicators come across and they'll they'll ask the supervisor. And there's forever, you know, it doesn't happen real often, but uh, there are occasions when the guys will come back and have something circle on the map to do it with foliar. What's the total on this? Thing? Uh, uh, did I had it written down on a little piece of paper? Uh, it's roughly the same. I don't have it. I think it was down just a little bit, but uh, uh, the reason for that was because I did take, and like I said, I've I've, I've taken over the past several years the uh, controlling counties sure. in five dash one hundred two. We'll just do that because it's only like. Uh, Half a mile or a mile in, in Humboldt County, they're the controlling county. Looks like 32,500. That's, that, like I said, I had yeah, a stick in there. The cost of the chemical <laughs> gone up again? <coughs> the chemicals, uh, uh, the one that we use uh, the most, the streamline, <coughs> is the one we used earlier. That has taken a, a slight increase. Uh, that stuff's up there around, uh, you know, it's just roughly $100 a, a pound, but you're only using uh, eight and nine ounces per 100 gallons. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, and then it's a, a foliar. It uh, it works out to I think the next product works out to about a dollar thirty five a gallon, and that's the the high vol water that we've got on there. Now we do switch products around. If we do uh, have to switch to an aquatic, it's still a dollar thirty five a gallon. We just that's what we do. We just use different products, but that will be uh, sent along with the daily spray records that we send along with the invoicing. So, and I used to bring around packets. But we've gotten to the point to where uh, the thing is with the packet is if it had all the, the possible chemicals that we could possibly use, we don't use all those products. I mean, it's, just, it's products that we label for drainage. Uh, another thing is if you get any complaints or any questions on the product, I would like to be the one answering the questions. So if you have anybody call and say, hey, what are they using? You know, what, you know, you're spraying in the water and and then yeah, time, the dates, and the application. Well, it's just and then I can, you know, if they need to have the labels and safety data sheets right. and, and that, I can I can get those all provided. Yeah. Did you have any problem with people getting after your employees? Uh, well, we did we just several years ago when the I you know, noticed you started they started wearing the vests. We started wearing that. I don't know what took so long for me. I've been doing this for going on 34 years now, but it's just been fairly recently, like within the last five years, that I thought. Why don't, we be, why don't we wear the, the, the floor floor safety floor. colors? And ever since we started doing that, it has. Your name's on the trucks now, too. Well, aren't they? that might change, though, because oh. uh, it, uh, what we found in Minnesota <laughs> is uh, that just puts a target on us for the DOT. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it seriously does. It seriously does. You can go down the road with the, the, that sign on there, they're going to really? stop every truck with a sign on it. And the problem I have is uh, I wouldn't, I looked into getting uh, all the trucks registered with the DOT, you know, to the, the, get the numbers and everything. The problem I get into with that is the guy driving that truck has got to keep a log book and he's got to keep the same hours as a truck driver. And when my guys are out there, you know, they might, even if he drives to the ditch in the morning, they get on a four-wheel all day long, his day started. When well, he started yeah, the yeah. So you've got to go, they can only work 10 hours and eight off. And it's like, for what we do, we can't do that. I mean, my guys, Look forward to those, you know, like uh, the sun up to sundown stuff in the summertime. Yeah. So because it might rain the next day, or it might. It might rain or something, and uh, but we found that out the hard way. The guys uh -huh. did get stopped up there, and they went through. Hey, I, I called many Minneapolis and talked right with them. That's where I'm going. And I, I thought, well, maybe we can just register the trucks that go up there. Well, that's not the way it works. You don't register the truck. You register the company, mm -hmm. and then every truck has to have the numbers. And it uh, okay. then the then cost. Wasn't there a lawsuit? Two years ago, on the fish kill. Well, that was blaming. that. I, I've got personal experience with that because that was <laughs> us that they were going after. Yeah, yeah. And that was down in Southwest Iowa on a drain ditch. We were actually doing a, an aquatic application for Arrowhead, and there were, and, the, and you've got to understand the, the the systems down there aren't like here in the summertime. The lake quits raining. They're not going to move into the ditch. They don't want to be too hot. hot. They just dry beds. They just dry up. Oh, yeah. And we happen to be spraying at the same time that some of those fish were dying. Uh, it finally, that started in, in uh, on Labor Day of 2007. And we finally won the case in July of 2013. I mean, it took six years. 
Yeah, they're yeah. going back and forth. And, uh -huh. um, it just, you know, the science wasn't there. We knew that from the very beginning. But I tell you what, you get the DNR after you on that stuff. Uh -huh. <laughs> and they, they, they don't know, they don't, they put a target on you. And yep. what they do is they decide what happened and then they try to backfill to come up with a case to make it look like that's what, yeah. what, what happened, in fact. So it even got to the point to where they, uh, first they thought, you know, they, they said, well, you killed the weeds. The weeds died and when they were decaying, caused oxygen depletion. Well, Anyway, I think everybody in this room knows how a life safe works. It doesn't work that fast because the fish were dying while we were there. And so they got backed off on that, and then they went with the algae. Well, that didn't, didn't pan out. And then they, then they finally came up, one of the things that I found interesting is they came up with some diatom, you know, some little uh, diatom, whatever that is, that uh, we killed them, a diatom that may or may not have even been present at the time. I mean, they never, they never found it. That was just one of the theories they came up with. So uh, thank goodness we finally got it out to uh, uh, back to district court in Monona County, and um, we got the nod from the judge down there. And Basically, yeah. we found out the fish don't live in a dry ditch. Yeah. yeah, it was just, in fact, you could go down there, and Troy said he went down and touched the water, and it felt like a warm bath. Yeah, yeah, when the water doesn't flow, the water yeah. it's hot. Yeah. And the channel down there, the channel in this particular ditch, because it was one, when it was designed, it was designed to, to drain 20,000 acres. Well, due to changes over the years, it's only draining 10,000 acres now. And the ditch channel itself is, is 50 feet wide. But in the summertime, you go down there and step across it. Because it, it just the water just isn't there. The only place there's water is at the uh, uh, road crossings where you've got the scouring. And there, there's uh, pools there. But otherwise... There was no moving water. At, uh, yeah. All right. So, Don, I think another thing you do is help. You always call law enforcement when you're. We always call law enforcement, even though the guys are wearing the safety colors. You know, we call them when we get started, and then we call them when we're done. So if they get any calls, you know, after we're done, and we've got notation, then they know it's somebody else out there. Because uh -huh. yeah, we, we run into some stuff here. I don't. One year up in the northwest corner, some guy accused the guys of stealing his uh, his tile marker flags, his intake flags. I'm going. Why would my guys want to steal your flags? You know? yeah. And we had a uh, hunter the one year, you know, that was back before we started wearing the colors. We were out here actually in the fall during hunting season. And the guys were riding their four wheelers down the ditch and there were, there were deer running in front of them. And there was a real avid hunter in part of the county that uh, he was running around and getting the, the farmers all stirred up. And finally one of the guys just asked him, well, did you, did you go out and ask him, ask him what they were doing? And I remember when the guy came back there, my applicator came back that, that, uh, that evening. He said, well, I went up and the guy came out there and, and the guy, he asked the guy, well, how are you doing? And the guy said, a lot better than you. You got a lynch mob on after you. <laughs> and it's like, well, just ask us what we're doing. You know. But now, like I said, the, the safety colors, uh, when people see that in their field, they associate you, those people with being a, a maintenance person yeah. first. Utility workers or something. Yeah. But, you know, and the thing is, you know, these guys, you know, people are protecting other property. And if you're out there on a four-wheeler with just street clothes on, they don't just think you're doing something wrong. They know it, and yeah. they, you know, when they're they're already hot into the collar when you when you catch up to them. Yeah. Do okay. you have any you know, business cards done just in case somebody would pass this? You know, and I do in my let me I check in my my briefcase, but I do have some. You do just leave some off with me or whatever, or leave some back here. And I'll leave some. You know, just get everybody had one during the season, so we had a question they could call you directly. Yeah. Almost, yeah. So. I'll get some if I don't have it in my briefcase to drop in the office. I'll get some. Yeah, I want to pick up and bring it back in. So, and I'll let you know when we get started. And okay, it looks like it might be fairly soon. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Don. Thanks. All right. It's nine thirty. Let's go. A motion to go into drainage. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.
Alright, we're back on. We're in drain. I'll have to look at that. First item this morning, we need an update on the retention pond. Okay, I'm not going to have a final answer for you yet, but we're getting a lot closer. We went through Cree, Texas, summary of pipe. Last week we finished it up, um, got it all in a form that I can get to them for their review. The, the good part of it is, it looks like we're going to just be at contract price or slightly over because we extended the pipe on the south end. Um, but we do have some differences. Um, and it's, but it's not as drastic as I thought. Uh, there's only a couple of entries that are, that are more than 100 feet difference. Um, uh, and we, we're pretty sure we know what happened there. They supplied a different strength of pipe for a short distance. Um, so that created that difference. I, using this, I went through estimates for Cretex and Denver. And like I say, the Cretex one, right now I'm just under the bid price, but that's, I'm not confident. I've I got to be comfortable with these totals before I send it to them, and that'll be today or tomorrow. Um, part of the pricing we need is also the appraisal report. Um, I met last Thursday with appraisers, um, that's Pat Hill and Brent Keenest and uh, came up with numbers for that. We had this in a review form for quite some time, but I wanted to go over with them on how we're handling crop production loss. Um, I believe we were like at $400 an acre. We were. Yeah. Now, here's what the commissioners are now, as appraisers, would like us to do. They would like us to consider the disturbed area 50% loss, the basically the year after construction, 30% the next, and 15 the next. Um, and we base that on 200 bushel an acre and $4 a bushel corn. Adding those totals up, we get $760 an acre. What was that? 760 So I, this is right now it's just redlined. Uh, the, the governor office it does these for me was out, um, but um, this is just over the right away. Just over the right away. Yep. Right. Now, if they have actual crop loss during the construction yeah, season, outside of the right away. Yes. Yeah. Just, uh, just for that year. There'll be a link like crop insurance on top of that if reduces their yield, wouldn't they? Oh, it's up to them. I don't know. Well, that's a small. You got to have so many acres, and it doesn't work okay. that way. Okay. Only if you have a major loss for the entire year. Okay. Yeah. Not just okay. portion. Okay, and I wasn't sure how that would work. So, so um, I haven't officially submitted the appraisal report yet, uh, but I wanted to just let you know that's part of our consideration for $125, um, and we will have that in your hands. I'm going to make this adjustment, um, and just so you know, we, we also worked on nine reclassifications, so I'll be bringing those down for signature later this week or the start of next week. Um, uh, so I've used the uh, easement costs from this that's not finalized yet. Um, there's, there, there's a bill from Mark for tree clearing. That's part of the project. We're going to get that incorporated. I haven't presented that to you yet. Um, so I have to finalize the materials, finalize the installation, and then we'll get the engineering. Um, I'm going to get the total totals from Trish here as far as warrants outstanding, and then I can have a final number to work with. Um, the, there was a lot of rock used to stabilize that area. Uh, we've got pictures of every spot. Um, it was very, very soupy in places, and we didn't want that pipe going anywhere. So, um, worst case, um, if the dollars aren't there for the pond construction, we will have the right-of-way taken care of, we will have the trees taken care of and paid for, so we're reducing the cost for any additional funds we need to get. I was hoping to have an answer final today for you, but I don't. Um, you have talked to Mike so right? Yeah, but he see he needs final numbers. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. 
Yes, he, we know he's in the loop for the situation, and then we'll evaluate the dollars once I get these dollars to him. So we're, we're pushing on it to get it done so we know right where we're at. So if we need to go after other funds, we can do it just as soon as possible. So and like I say, have the right of way taken care of for it, have the tree clearing taken care of it, simplify and reduce the future costs uh, as far as if we need to get other funds. So we're proceeding, but we're not quite yet. Right, right. I wanted a definite answer today. No, it wasn't happening today. Just with the so do you have a time frame you hope to shoot for here. Well, I'm going to get it to Mike this week. Um, it's just a matter of the time he takes to review it. He's very good. Um, takes his job seriously. I think he'd look at it. Do we have anything coming up? Say in a couple of weeks. And I can, if we get it sooner, I can let you know right. and get on the agenda. Um, looks like we don't have anything for a little while. Well, can I just, you need the item by Friday noon? No, you need it Thursday noon, right? Thursday noon. Yeah, right. Okay. Well, let's see. I'll push and see if we can get something by this Thursday noon. If not, hopefully the next Thursday noon, and then we'll get it on the agenda. Um, yeah. So within two weeks we should have something. I would think so. I think yeah. good. I think yes. Good. He's good. He's conscientious. He likes to help where he can. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So. Mark, I wish I had more for you. I do too. Yeah. You've been in a long time. You keep taking your time and, yeah. Bob? A question. I see you're going to make damage claim on right away. Uh, is that something new that's starting with this project then? Having uh, 50, 30, 15 like that? Uh, yes. That's a higher number than we've had before. We did run at $400 on the one east of town, and there was a lot of discussion on was that enough. So, yeah, that, it is new. Okay. But it's replacing the flat fee we had at one time, wasn't it? Wasn't there a flat fee? Yes, there was. Yes, yes, the yes. yes. Oh, no, no, no. Ah, no, no, no. I understand that. Yeah, no, but it is different. It's, it's, it's a no, different no, approach. It's a different way of doing it. I think it's probably a fair way. Well, because sometimes. You know, property changes tenants and owners. That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, the other way, probably a lot, I mean, it allowed for some of this, but it wasn't any specific way that we did it. I mean, it's for crop That's right. That's future production loss based on 50, 30, 50. Take into consideration the weatherman, too. Yeah, yeah, yes, that's right. So, um, what was that number seven? What? $760 an acre. Oh, $760. So the, and, and just, I don't know if you want to write this map, but the, 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 sec, the first production year after the project was $400. The second year of production after was $240. And the third year was $120 for a total of $760 an acre. I think it's refining it better. Um, from what uh, Pat and, and Brent tell me, it's, it's more realistic. Mm -hmm. So, I, yeah. So you used 200 as a given. It would go 200 bushels an acre. Okay. Yeah, and, I, and we know some of the land wouldn't be quite that high, but you got to start somewhere and try and be fair. And, and somewhere in the middle. Yeah, yeah. And some people are getting more than that. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't believe how production's changed. Uh, it is, it's amazing. So. Well, the price period may change quicker than. Well, that. that's you true. Know, yeah, 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 true. Yeah, true. Yeah, very true. Yeah, Mark, go straight with you. Yeah, Mark. Right. When you guys get it figured out, you'll get called on next meeting. Yeah, there you go. That'd be the best. And I will get you the number and get it out to you. Yeah, there you go. That'd be the best. And then I will get through this no later than tomorrow to get it in Greetex's hand. And uh, and yeah, we'll stay in touch with you. Okay. Absolutely. Mark, what's your difference? Greetex, eight. Thanks. I knew it was a good year. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <coughs> Our next item is on D2. You're going to hit. You're doing a good job today. What's that? You're just right on the schedule. Oh, I'm watching the clock. Boy, you're doing good. <laughs> um, Pat and Brent signed the reports last Thursday uh, with the final adjustments. Um, I believe we're at, to me, we're at the point where we've tried to take into account all the issues that have been raised. Um, I believe we're to the point where 
you make this official and then you deal with any questions. Uh, and I'll have one for Bob too to take. Um, and yeah, they're alphabetical just because that's the way people like to look them up. I mean, let's make it easy for them. Um, you bet. And uh, yeah, not to say there isn't something that needs adjustment, but we, we, boy, we tried to take everything into account. One of the biggest things we did um, was this probably our fourth or fifth. Yeah. Yeah. We've got to be getting close. Oh, absolutely. I think I, I, the commissioners basically said, go with this. If there's something we need to look at it, make it part of the supervisor's direction to us um, to to try and get this to, to final acceptance. So um, they really, they've, I'd say, poured their heart into this to try and be fair with it. Um, yeah. So it's. I have. Well, from the last one to this one, we were fairly close anyway. There hasn't been yeah. a lot of major changes. Not, not, no, no, not a major. No, nope. not a major change. I think one of the last things was that lateral L down at the beginning yeah, where it covered several quarters, quarter quarters, yeah, to try and make that. I mean, they were getting, and Bob, I think, might have brought this up, they were getting extremely good benefit for not a lot of money um, the way we had it before. So by having them paying on that L, uh, it, it got it a lot more balanced, I guess more representative of benefit, I think. So the last one we got, I had final on, so this is the final, final, final? <laughs> it's a till the hearing, till the hearing. <laughs> we're not going to make changes before the hearing now, I guess is what I'm saying. I need 48 hours for us to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> but regardless of that, I think we're so close we'll go to hearing with it. I mean, different dates on it. Yeah. You should have uh, January 26th, I believe, and yeah, that was the same day. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh, okay. And you were reviewing that, so I didn't look at it. Oh, okay. I saw the night this morning. Yeah. Okay. This one should be the same list. Yeah, I was going to make sure everything looked the same. Oh, okay. Okay. I didn't realize we'd given it to you already. Yeah. Because we had it ready, and then it was a couple weeks to get signatures on the report, so we didn't put it on the agenda, so we knew we had the signatures. So yeah, it, it's it's a, technically been done a while, but I didn't want to turn it in until we had signatures. Okay, so before we vote on this, then Trish, you were explaining to me last week. What is your intention on this for getting this out? And getting this, I mean, you're trying to make get this. Get, we need to get this done before fall because of the last. Oh week. yeah, yeah. Well, we need to get it. Go ahead. I need to have it. I need to have it out. A good idea. I think it's kind of done by May. That's what I thought. Okay. Well, April 11th, I think, gets you your 40 days. So and and any adjustments you come up with after the hearing can just be done very quickly. And, I mean, if you accept it subject to any changes that you ask for, um, yeah, then a week later is the final approval, and she can have it then on the books. Oh. I mean, the, the, the final, final version. You go the right. Right. Because that may come real quick after about April. Oh my gosh. Oh, geez. Can't believe it's March tomorrow. Bob's got a couple questions here, Rick. The report you gave us today, uh -huh. what major differences are in this report versus the very first one we started with? The very first one, did we have, I'm not sure we adjusted the egg down yet on the very first one. I'm trying to remember. Rick. We, we looked at the possibility of starting over with adjustments, but we've made like six or eight different adjustments on it. Some of them are pretty small. Um, you worked on the city. Yes, yeah, worked on the city. Yes, yes. Were you going to go back to the city and present that to them again? Well, we'll get them a copy of this, but I, we haven't set up a meeting with them. 
Why well, didn't know, but I didn't yeah. know if that's what you meant when you had the meeting with them the first time, whether you're going to go back and talk to them again on this or just get the report so they have it available. That's what we're going to do, get the report so it's available. We we feel we've got enough feedback and the commissioners felt they had enough feedback that they this is as far as they can make it right now. Uh, so we're just going to get it in the city's hands and say this is what we're going to hearing with. Okay. So then will this be available to any landowner or will these be sent back out to all landowners again or just available as needed or? Well, I guess. I mean, it's more postage, more damage, more stuff. I'm just I, asking. I don't know, I guess. Um, Chris, what do you want to do? <laughs> I think it would be nice to get a few of these over to City Hall. Yes. Get me yes. a bill for the people in the city. Technically, I have to send it out. Do you technically? I, yeah, I don't want to. Oh, well, let's, it, let's, let's do it. To. Let's do it the right, right way, then. That's the best way to communicate. Everybody gets it in their hands. And it's a lot of owners. Uh, yes. That list has been oh, refined. Another question. You're going to send this to everybody, then, which I think you probably legally have to. The other one is um, this assessment is for the tile project itself as it stands without the lawsuit that I read in the paper because I can't ask you questions about the lawsuit. But my, my question that you need to think about, and you can't answer me, I understand that, but you have $300,000, $400,000 of interest that you're going after in the bond company, you're going after the company that put this in the ground. If the lawsuit goes against you, where does the money go then? Does it come back assessed against this land or not? And I know you can't legally answer me that, but you guys need to think about that. Or can you actually have legal costs go to the district for something like this, you know? And you don't have to answer me. I just want you to know that I'm asking the questions now, because if you don't ask them, and the questions you're asking aren't out of hand because no. this would be determined in any type of lawsuit how that's all going to be. I mean, it's not particularly so relevant in the law, but these, these are so basic questions. And I talked about Bob last week, and I said that's basically questions that need to be addressed yeah. at some point. I mean, at, at this point, it's not going to be included what's going on now, which everybody understands. It'll be a, if there's an assessment coming, it'll be another one on top of this. Yeah. So this assessment doesn't include no, all the not. interest and everything else at this point. I don't think it does. Is this just what you use for your the construction? Construction and engineering. Okay. Yeah. So the numbers from this. Right. I had. So the three hundred thousand interest is not included in these numbers then. In my mind, it wasn't. I don't think so. Because I believe it's yeah. There, there's there big issues oh, yet. There might have been. Would there have been any interest included on the original? Well, not really with the no, no. The, the original numbers we had, we tried to include the interest. Well, I mean, yes, we that part would be on there, but the yeah. additional. Oh, not not the additional I mean, because of the delay. There, there should be a number for interest in here in the beginning project, but it would be a very small number. And without going back to finding that book. I have a summary of how we came up with these numbers. And this one's particularly complicated because it's, it's split between the main and lateral eye, and, and it's, first three we also had to take into account yeah, that, that an open ditch would have been more efficient and more cost the project. So that had an adjustment. So I've got a sheet where I work all that out. And we tried to include the all the construction, the engineering, yeah, the engineering. But uh, your interest, but your extra engineering cost then, because you've had to do extra no, cost. That will be no, this it goes back a ways. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh. And so we do. We started a separate category for <laughs> shady expense. And so um, there's there we have a number of, okay. with for engineering that we feel was a direct cause by the project, um, and that's part of the consideration too for this lawsuit. So what's the what's the course you have? You set your date for your hearing date. If there's objections to this at that point in time, do you try to change those at that point in time? Yeah. Or if, yes, if the, if the board feels they're warranted, the changes requested, yes, then they can they can make those changes and accept the report with the changes. That's that's the next step in the reclassification. Yeah. yeah. Well, the question, Bob, what do you mean like if we do the lawsuit, which I don't think we will? Somebody's got to pay the bill. I'd be landowner. 
Yeah, I, justice gets twisted sometimes, but this just. Well, well, then I, I wasn't. We did all these years we've done construction and design. We've never had one go to the bond company before. We're going to have me coming up <coughs> to me on by phone conversation. So and you're going to be there, and Trish is going to be there at least one supervisor. I'm probably going to yeah. have to because I'm not for sure what I'm up to there. Yeah, it'd be a good idea. And that'd be a good time to ask that question. We're going to need that. Yes. That, that would be the best time. That'd be a great time. Discussing with yeah. our attorney, and they'll be discussing by phone with theirs. Yep. Perfect need, time to ask. You need to have a list of these questions. Trish, you're going to be asking that day. Yes. Perfect for that. Before we agree to anything verbally, we better make sure we know where we stand. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But I appreciate bringing that to our attention because uh, it's something that needs to be addressed before we get to that meeting. Mm -hmm. or, or, or at least on that day, but how does this work? I mean, we don't fully understand, I don't think. Well, I guess my major, concern, sure how little or my major concern is to all of a sudden <coughs> you get $500 an acre assessed here, for instance, okay, and the next thing you get turned around and another $100 an acre assessed because of a lawsuit, you know? Right. Um, <coughs> bad enough to do it once, not twice. Huh. Yeah. Well, and at some point, sure. we need to have some conversation with both sides to see where that's heading so we can come back and say, how far do you want to go with this? And this is going to kind of be a step-by-step -step process. And as you heard Don say earlier, you know, a lawsuit thing can drag on forever. Well, you can't. They can't drag on forever. No, either. no. Jeez. Let's hope we can get better results and move a little closer. Mm -hmm. What I didn't realize is that you had to sue the bonding company to get them to pay. I, I, that was yeah, that was yeah, new to me. I, I didn't realize you had to sue them either. I, I didn't. They were like an insurance company. Yes. To yeah. file a claim. You file yeah. a claim against them, and they, then they go after the person and take care of Exactly. Them. That's how I always heard it was done. But before we get into it too much, yeah. we're aware of the situation. Yes. Right? We're going to have meeting. I think that meeting is going to be very important, and I do, I do want to supervise there and Rick and Trish. Uh, on our side, and I think probably need a little bit ahead of time to ask some of these questions with them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a lot easier to ask before we get into a conversation. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. The other question I know we have a we had a year from the time of the closing to the, to to have any future damage to the tile is. When you send this reclassification letter, can you put a note in there just saying, do you have any more damage to your project on your land? Please, get it please let us know. And could that be in that same paragraph when you send this? Letter out, or, or that be too much? That would be a handwritten note. <laughs> <laughs> don't Are you push, don't <laughs> push this on the table. Well, I just wanted to see the glare. I think that's that a good, good thought. I that. Uh, yeah, that is good thought. But I think that you know, sometimes we forget there's damages out there and we have holes show up or something, yeah. I mean, we had three inches of rain sitting there in December, you know, that should have maybe been something, you know? Okay. So um, you're looking at dates, and you're thinking what? April 11th. I looked at it right. Now, it's, this is a lot of notices. Right now. Yeah, I know. Yeah, there you go. What did you say? April 11th. Does that look right, Trisha? You probably haven't had a chance to. Um, the 13th is actually 20 days. Oh, it is? Well, so it's too soft. Well, oh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, We're 6. Right? Yeah. But if you started counting weeks, Monday the, here. The notice would go tomorrow, right? What? What? what, what you know, we're we're to six weeks, right? We're here. Yeah, we're going to have to One, two, three, four, five, six. Six weeks should be 42 days, shouldn't it? When you get the... I mean, it's whatever. You might need a little more time. I don't know. But, then but I think you're going by when it's published, right? Yeah. That's what I was Well, saying. it has to be published 20 days ahead of the... Oh, that's right. It's only and the mailing 20 days ahead. You have to set the hearing at least 40 days from the day that, that you get the report. Oh, okay. hey, timing wise for the amount of workload though, that I just you're just gonna do it, aren't you? She's a goer. Yeah, she is. <laughs> you know she's gonna have to get it done. Mm -hmm. There's nothing on the 
Pretty much. Yeah, you know, we've never anything down. Oh, yeah. We've got to go in there already. She's way ahead of us. How about 9 o'clock? Probably 11. That work? And before that, it's a black point. That's got to be Yeah. Yeah, during. Yeah. yeah. 9 o'clock on the 11th, would somebody like to make the motion? Yeah. I made a motion for a hearing for 9 o'clock, April 11th, for EB2 and all the laterals. And, then we're, uh, and, and, and also to accept the report accept. in this motion? Okay. To accept the so, reclass report. So we have a motion to accept the amended reclass report and set the hearing date for 9 a.m. April 11th. Is there a second? I'll second. All right. Some more discussion? Any discussion? Aye. Aye. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those is carried. I'd like to catch you a minute before you leave for the yeah. other two, if that's possible. Yeah, we need okay. to okay. some stuff. Yeah. Um, okay. Anything else? Okay. Um, uh, let's see. Bob, do I have a question? No, I was way back to my phone. She called me out for so now. Yeah. They picked the only day I have a meeting in, in uh, April, by the way. Oh, crap. <laughs> really? Darn, your wife shouldn't have told us all your schedule. After you get through it, sometime you want to sit down. Yeah. I know. <laughs> so. Um, Take it after yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think so. Oh, we're going to be how many just how many reclassifications hearing hearings do you think you can Monday. handle in a on a Monday? I had more time. Okay. Some Sunday. Some of those are all the. Uh, I know. Six for eleven. Twenty-two, twenty-five. Sixty-nine. Twenty-two, twenty-five. Yeah. Six of them. Ten or nine. Nine. We've got nine reclassifications to go bring before you. Most well, of them. You didn't have. Six. Did you say six? Six. Oh, that's not easy. Oh, right. Yeah. We we did close on six too. Yes. That's going to be a lot of people. These are mostly yeah. those. Yeah. And I and and there were some adjustments after I met with the commissioners <laughs> Thursday, and we're going to make those and get those to you. But it's, I don't think either any of them will take more than about 15 I minutes because they're. Because when you're on them, it's about as easy to do Yeah, it's yeah. Because yeah. it's, it's, the only cost they'll have is for the reclassification. They paid for the 11 pre note as part of 11. So. Well, now we got, every time you come down here, it costs us money. That's right. <laughs> and if I can <laughs> split it between 10 projects, it doesn't cost anybody yeah. very much. Yes, there you go. All right, let's do that. Thank you. Okay. What? I wonder what language that was, too. All right. It's the DD92 thing with the black service. Oh. I know. Well, this was wrecked after me. How are you? We need to find out from Paul where he found it in his code. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything yeah. we've been given isn't real clear. I mean, it points to the city being responsible, but it isn't. He just walked by, by the way. Who did? Paul. Paul. Why is he doing here? Yeah, well, he's not on the gym. He's hanging around. I think he's just kind of lurking. Yeah, that's what I was getting. Okay, and I have a whole list of things that I want to do for interrogatories and documents due for 114. So I might be asking for some help from you guys on some stuff. If I have any documents that I produced or Dates that you can remember. Oh, they're just asking for information. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Who's asking for information? Oh, Doug. What you provided wasn't it the stack? Just it was unbelievable. Pages. Yeah. They want anything and everything. Yeah. Yeah. 
necessity for the trees to. Oh, here. I didn't have a. Oh, okay. That was a pay estimate for general. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll finish up with Peggy in a little bit. Great. All right. Thank you. Again. Thank you. Motion to go out of So moved. I'll second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. All right. Yeah, Peggy will have to come back for a minute because we've got a couple of reports. Let's hold on to this direction. Yeah, just ready on the You guys all signed up for down to Capitol on the 9th? I thought we were. I think we are. And then Isaac the next two days after that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Are they starting at Capitol Day like two hours later than normal? 9 o'clock at the Wall of Philly. Yeah. Who's going to talk to us? Brent says he's going to be there. Well, he doesn't start until. Well, geez, the paper yeah, I got was going to start until 11. 11, I just got that. I think you have to go to administration's from 10 30 to 11 at 4. Maybe it's later. Yeah. I thought it was 9 o'clock. I thought it was just It is later. We thought so. I didn't even read that. Because I thought that too. I thought, well, usually you're up at the Capitol by. Yeah. Yeah, we're usually over at Capitol by 11. Yeah. All right. I think what we have left is reports from yeah. Rick and I, maybe. Yeah. Yes, Rick, I'll, I'll, go first. I'll go first. Okay. Hi, Monday the 22nd. Um, had a Humboldt County Housing Association meeting at 3 in the afternoon. We uh, discussed those houses down in South Humboldt. Uh, they're looking at possibly, they have a lot of, from the, getting a response from the realtors that the basements aren't finished in those. And they come down and they look at this basement. And, People want to finish product is what we're kind of coming more, more and more. So they're thinking about uh, possibly finishing the basement on a couple of them. So they're looking into that. Um, then they discuss location for the next building trades home, which is on the high school builds. Uh, and they, they haven't picked a location yet. We just discussed different options. Um, surprisingly, there isn't very many empty lots in Humble that are available. Trying to find a spot is kind of difficult at times because we thought it'd be nice to like find a lot in town and just build something that's uh, more affordable housing for a lower income. Um, if they have two for sale and they aren't sold, right, would they build another one right away? I mean, just a question. Well, that's what we we're concerned because they have two that are up in that 200, 245. Right. This last one they built is 285, like it's listed at. And I said, well, maybe we should build something. That's why you're getting back something more than that hundred something. Something, thousand. and there's there's funds available if they keep it at a low to moderate income. That's what I thought. It, it can be. Pool. There's a different funding That's pool they can use for that, and they can absorb some of the cost and uh, make that house available for somebody. Well, I mean that would make sense like, if you can just find the lot. Is what you're saying? Finding the lot's it's difficult because. My question is, I've had several people ask about the one out on West River Drive. Yeah. Is there any way that they would consider doing, uh, just putting an allow allowance in there for, like, the cabinets and stuff? Because I've heard that some of the people say, well, I don't like that color cabinet. Yeah, and, you that's know, what you hear. You're fighting with a woman that... You're going to lose every time. Oh, yeah, and, and you're spending a hundred. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying anything against, but they do. They go in there and they look, and they they picked out that color. Well, if they're white covered people, right, and they got dark wood in there, look I just think that years, yeah, you're not that's happy. something that yeah. you put three hundred thousand dollars in a house. You want to make sure that yeah, and they did offer that a, a, an allowance to have the cabinets painted. That, that, that is out there on that house. Yeah, that would need yard work too. Yeah, there's a lot of that. One in South Humboldt, there's four down there. They'd also consider putting a cabinet allowance in there because they're sitting with no cabinets whatsoever. You know, somebody got excited. Which ones? The four we own in South Humboldt. There's no no kitchen cabinets in those. No appliances. Oh, appliances. Appliances. I'm sorry. No appliances. 
Yeah. But those are the ones you think about maybe doing a basement. Yeah, right? there's two of those there. I think what Rick's finding out, and I think it's probably typical, you know, today's world people want move in ready. They don't mm -hmm. want they're not as handy as doing things they, they don't want the mess. They also want to know they what they're gonna have in it. They, they want the final cost because they go to the bank and I have them approved for this amount, well I can't do any more figure out how to make that work. So they want to yeah. know exactly they what they want. They want it move in ready, so but that's something that was discussed. All right. Are there any lots? City and that was one of the other one of the locations we discussed. They they looked at possibly even looking at a uh, twin home for the building trades to build, which is you know what there's a few of those around town that they yep. rent out, but that be more of a saleable one. Yeah. So they even discussed lots of different options. Um, then Monday evening I was at Farm Bureau. Tuesday evening I was down in Fort Dodge at the landfill meeting at 5.30. And uh, there's just a, an update on that household hazardous waste building is going up and that's going to be, I'm sure that'll be open up early summer because there's a little bit of on that they it's up in frames and putting cheating on it. And a lot of the cement works pretty well done. Is there a test to that for the rest of their counties? Well, if first they're starting off with just that building. Okay. Then they're going to start mobile, looking at bringing in mobile units to set around that they'll come and pick up every so often. There'll be a little fee on that possibly. Just for that convenience of not having to drive to Fort Dodge. To, yeah. And they figured if they have that mobile here closer, they'll get more collected and it won't be going to the land. Because so when it goes to the land, it'll just cost them more money. Some of that some people don't want to transport and their cars too far. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. And then, let's see, Wednesday I was back down from Hanson South Humboldt at 3, 3 o'clock in the afternoon on Wednesday again, just doing a little walkthrough and t discussing what we might do down there as for, uh, uh, as into how to finish the basements off. Yeah. And I think that's all I had. Hey, before Jerry gave a kiss, I forgot, I went to the Midas meeting Wednesday night also. And we, as far as business there was, we just paid some repair bills for some of the buses wearing out. At one time, they're going to move money to four different banks. Because you had too much money. FDIC. But then we got an agreement with one bank to only pay $25 a month to get, a, get it back to one bank and still be protected. So we had a very short meeting, probably 15 minutes. Sorry about that. No, that's fine. Monday night, Farm Bureau, 6 o'clock. And as everybody stated, we had a good meeting. They had a good turnout. We had a good turnout. Got a chance to explain the law enforcement, remodeling a little bit, and Rick did a good job doing going over that. And, um, you know, we just made it clear that the budget's manageable, but then doable, but it's, you know, it's tight. Everything's getting tighter, so dollars are have to be well spent, that's for sure. Um, CSS meeting now going on Wednesday, 10 o'clock. Good crowd up there. Just waiting now for the April first start date. You know, I got moved from March first to April first for the MOC. Um budget looks good. There's um still a lot of people worried. I mean people are worried about how this is all gonna play out and stuff, but we're really trying hard to get all of our providers rates in line to what we think the Medicare rates are gonna be. I mean there's a lot of realigning of of all these <coughs> providers that are going to, you know, provide services, and their rates are going to have to be in line with what's going to be accepted and how much it's going to be paid for. But uh, it, it's, it's just ongoing. You know, the issues with mental health are going to never go away. And it's, I mean, I, we're having a lot of success, like up in Clear Lake, getting people out of the um, group settings. And for some reason, Clear Lake has done an exceptionally good job getting people off the on board help find affordable housing and get these get the members down into like two, three groups into apartment complexes. And the feedback I hear is great. You know, they feel like they have some ownership or have some pride in where they're living. They're not just living in a dormitory type room setting, you know. That being said, Jim Albright Al Albert Albright Bird, I think that's how you still pronounce it. He's worked there for forty years and he's decided to retire here next month, so we'll miss him because he's run that place up where we're very well. But I think, you know, people are getting stressed out. It's, it's a big
big job, it's big responsibility, and all the regulation coming is making it more difficult to keep people in, you know, the job changes going. So, Bob was going to be with him this week, but I said, I'll have it and find a replacement for him. But, um, otherwise, everything's working pretty good, I guess. So. And then Friday, we went down, Peggy and I met here at 9 o'clock, and we signed a note for the law enforcement center, and we went down there and took some pictures for the paper, and took a tour, and um, we've got a lot to be proud of down there. I mean, I, it's cost a lot of money, no doubt, but it's a project that had been not worked up, you know, we hadn't made improvements for 30, 40 years. I was going to say, by the time you figure that out, in the years that we used it, it's we we to go back through it and see how well we were able to extend the life of our equipment and we made it work and we got by and it was probably a perfect time to do the both. So hopefully this will last us a long time going forward. So once again I thank Rick because he did a lot of extra work for that, keeping in touch with people and he especially because always makes it fun. But, um, in the end, you know, I think everybody was hoping for project that was for the good of the community and I think it speaks well for itself. So hopefully when we have an open house several people will go down and take a look at it. They need, yeah. you should see what we got invested down there. So, so I have one more thing I, f I forgot. What do you mention that oh, Thursday morning I was down at the LAC and met with Kent from the paper and Dean and I we sat down and just kinda of touched on some things with him because he'd been in there taking those photos so we were there from about eight thirty till ten. They got me on there. I knew it had been somewhere else. <laughs> 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 you got anything else, Peggy? No, but I was just going to mention, Carla, the handout you gave us for NACO. <coughs> I see Linda Langston is going to now work for NACO, and that's pretty exciting. She's yeah. resigning so. first April. That's what I was wondering. She did she resign as a supervisor then. Wow. And this gal in the back from Oklahoma, I figured that make you guys want to go. Take a look at that picture. Oh, I'll get you there. She's a little she's southern girl. She's a yeah. rancher's yeah. wife from Oklahoma. She's got a southern accent, man. Oh, oh the people with accents. So our schooling just to, yeah. is next week? Yes. Yeah. What, Wednesday to Friday? Yes. Yeah. Are we set for rooms and stuff down there? Yes. Yeah. We're already all we're in. The all right. Peggy yeah. takes good care of it. Well, I, thought, I figured she did, but I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't yeah. staying here. This is the first here. time he hasn't had to do it right. himself. Yeah, last well, time I <laughs> sat there and steamed out trying to get in. Yeah, I know, between, between everybody else. You know, I don't know when the governor spoke to us last time. I think the uh, lieutenant governor spoke to us one time, but it's been a while, so it might be an interesting area. Is there a schedule for that? Have I missed that? Yeah, a water project. She's like, I'm ready off one. Yeah, you can just get one. Yeah, I thought I just had one. That one was for Kelly on Tuesday. Oh, okay. Oh, are you talking about? Love the last year, Kyle? It doesn't work out. I think so. I think it was last year, yeah. Yeah, that's right. It should be. If you need more copies of anything, like your reservations or your schedule of meetings, I can run those off too for my pack. Okay. Okay, but typically we, we start that at Peggy. 9 in the morning now. Did we use Central Library Recovery? I thought it was 9, but it's the same level. Did we use yeah. Central yeah. Library Recovery? Yeah. 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 On the economic on the emergency manual. Yep. We're going to meet in one session before we break for a little session, right? Yep. That should be good. Yeah. I think Melanie's going down. It was a good good mix between the other association and the supervisors. They asked if we would yeah. meet with them, and it sounds like it be good meeting. Good information for everyone. So, looking forward to that one. Okay. With that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Thank you. Move for a second. I'll second. All in favor. Hi.